Hey guys, this is Gatsby with Tape, and today you join me for the first part of a two-part mission to Jupiter. Today I'm kind of approximating the Europa Clipper mission, which is a mission coming up for, well, a NASA mission coming up, where they will be launching a probe to investigate Europa, and then a probe to land on Europa. The Jovian Moon, which has, like, plumes of water coming out of it, and it might have life. I'm betting there's U um, European, European? Yeah, European? <laughs> European octopuses on Europa. Um, but yes, anyway, today we're launching the uh, flyby probe on top of a pretty bad approximation of a space launch system. One of the uh, big things about uh, this mission is it will be flying on the space launch system. Uh, just here, we're coming up to our first separation event. There go the side boosters. And then the main coil carries all the way into orbit. Yes, uh, the hope is that um, the, both the Clipper and Lander mission uh, will be able to fly on top of the space launch system because that will mean that uh, it can just go directly to Jupiter. You don't have to do a bunch of flybys and things, which is good because it makes it much quicker. And good for me because it makes it much easier to just fly to Jupiter rather than doing a bunch of uh, gravity assists and things, which uh, aren't my forte. Usually I just get lost, you know, around planets I'm not trying to go to. So yes, uh, that is what this is doing right now. It's four space shuttle main engines, but RS-25 engines, pushing it on uh, into orbit now. Now, of course, real uh, realism overhaul uh, simulates the solar system at real scale uh, with a few more realistic things. Um, oh, there goes the pharynx. Uh, a little late, actually. Uh, anyway, um, but yes, so uh, it's going to take. It takes a little while to get into orbit. This is sped up to four times speed, but I think uh, it takes about eight minutes to get to orbit, which is very quick because obviously it's just using these center core, so it just keeps ramping up in thrust-to-weight ratio. With the second stage, you obviously drop back to a little lower thrust, but we don't have that on the space launch system, which have the boosters and the core. Uh, and then you can see there is actually a second stage up there, but that's just for going into planetary, um, just a fairly basic liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen stage using a... Um, it's using a, a, a Saturn V engine, what's it called? The J2? Yeah, the J2 engine, that's what it's using. Anyway, we're in orbit now, and now we're planning our maneuver out to Joule. And, um, well, we discover that we may have been a little hasty. I probably should have waited just a little longer, because it's actually going to be slightly tricky to uh, get our encounter with Joule. Uh, not Joule, Jupiter. If I do that, the whole video, please forgive me. I'm used to Kerbal Space Program, where Jupiter is called Joule. Um, anyway, but yeah, you can see we're a little early. We can tweak this, and we do actually get ourselves an encounter, um, but it's pretty costly, and uh, isn't ideal, and... Uh, actually does mean that this first mission won't really work out. There's a bunch of reasons that this uh, first probe only just flies by Jupiter, and the reason we'll be launching a second one this episode, but one of them is we launched a little early. Uh, so it's going to take 8 kilometers to get out there, um, 8 kilometers per second of Delta V to get out there, and then a little more... Um, and then a lot more to actually get close to Jupiter, and it's, it, we're not going to actually get to Europa in this mission. We will in this episode, but uh, this was really just our first uh, test mission, I guess. Which makes sense, because I've actually never been to Jupiter in real, uh, realism overhaul before. I don't think I've ever actually been into planetary. Um, only done that in normal Kerbal Space Program. So this is really just a test mission. It's kind of like Voyager. We're figuring out how to go there. And now we're on the other side of the planet um, doing our burn. It is the dark side of the planet, so I've brightened the footage a little bit. So it looks very washed out, but uh, it means you can see something. So I hope you'll live with that. Anyway, um, you can also see during this uh, during this burn that we have to do all of our attitude control with the RCS on the probe. Um, because it's slightly unbalanced and we don't have any reaction wheels, so uh, this isn't ideal. Um, and is another reason this mission wasn't super successful, but it, it, you know, anyway, doesn't matter how successful it is right now. We are heading to Jupiter, and it looks like we will get an encounter, and we might be able to get quite close. And this is teaching us a hell of a lot about what it takes to go to Jupiter, um, and also... Uh, well, what footage looks like when it's this washed out. That's the problem when you go into the outer solar system, you have to burn on the dark side of Kerbin, and that's very dark, because there's no light. Um, that's that's a fact. You you learn a lot of things here at Tape Gaming. <laughs> anyway, with the burn almost completed, we have to finish it off with the thruster on the probe, which has so little thrust-to-weight ratio, it actually hurts my soul. Um, so this takes quite a while, but we do actually get our encounter with Jupiter just about, and... Um, 
you'll see that we're just glancing the system, but we still have quite a bit of delta V, about 1200 meters per second to get a little closer, but obviously that's pretty much all we're going to be able to do, not get into orbit or anything. So, yeah, bit of a farce, uh, but it's, it, it's working out, just about. Anyway, so uh, yeah, you can see with about 1200 meters per second, we can get pretty close to... Uh, Pretty close to Jupiter, just not that close. Anyway, it's time to warp out there and try to ignore all the lines going crazy. I don't know why Realism Overhaul does this, but all the all the orbit lines just go mental. You can see them flashing around like that. And it's a little a little head doing, but it's okay. Um, anyway, so yes, here we are firing up our engine for a 1200 meters per second burn, which will take 40 minutes. So let's cut ahead because, oh my god, this took ages. And I couldn't just leave it because there's no reaction wheel. And the RCS slowly induces oscillation. So every minute or so, I have to reset it. Um, so this took quite a while. But uh, yeah, with a little bit of time warping it, it was somewhat bearable and... Um, all worth it, because we'll of course get to Jupiter. So here we are, just finishing off our burn, finishing off the rest of our fuel, and we have our nice, fairly close encounter with Jupiter. Annoyingly, just outside the orbits of any of the moons, um, so we can't wangle ourselves an encounter, but we do get to uh, fly in and watch all the moons orbit. I love this shot. Um, one of the best shots ever from any space probe is when uh, the Juno spacecraft was coming in over uh, uh, Jupiter, and you could see all of the moons orbiting. It's beautiful. Anyway, we get a little bit of science. Obviously not really worth anything because... Uh, because this isn't a career mode, but it's always fun to bring science stuff, and uh, the most part we just get to see Jupiter sort of up close. Um, and we're just doing it four times time accelerate, because we'll get a better look later. Anyway, we've learned a lot, we know how to get to Jupiter now, we just have to do it a little better. So, we've uh, got ourselves another space launch system, put a slightly better probe um, with a slightly better second stage on top of it, and this is all very much improved. Actually, the uh, main rocket itself also has more Delta V, because it's using balloon tanks now, which, uh, well, which are much lighter than the tanks I was using before. But since we've uh, pretty much seen this launch, we'll just cut it down to its uh, important bits, or just some, well, some nice shots. Here we are just uh, leaving over Cape Canaveral. We're launching out of Cape Canaveral, by the way, hence the inclination in our orbit. Here we have our staging event, getting rid of those uh, solid rocket boosters, which actually kind of clang below the rocket. Not super safe, but they don't destroy anything, so everything's okay. But I doubt NASA would uh, like it if their solid rocket boosters kind of smacked together ben beneath their engines. And um, there's our fairing separation, a little nerve-wracking because uh, they don't separate that aggressively and almost hit the rocket, but rather elegant, so that's quite nice. And then a little later, we uh, complete our orbital insertion burn and actually get pretty much the best orbit I've ever got in, uh, in realism overhaul within two kilometers, rather circular. I'm quite happy with that. And uh, yeah, we actually have a bunch of fuel left over, but we can't use it because we're out of engine ignitions because, well, this is uh, realism overhaul. So we separate the second stage and slide on out of that... Uh, out of that um, the shroud, and we'll move on to our burn, uh, after we've planned our maneuver, of course, and we actually get a really nice uh, encounter, less than 7 kilometers per second of delta V, and we're right close to the, uh, right close to Jupiter, we can just do a quick inclination change and a few tweaks, and we'll be able to go and see all the moons and get nice and close, and everything's good, so I'm very happy with this one, and I think this should work out quite well. So, back to really horribly washed out footage so you can see something, it's time to do our burn, uh, again using a J2 engine from the Saturn V, uh, but it, with a slightly bigger fuel tank so that we have enough delta V. Although actually we didn't need more delta V because our bone was really small. And we can't keep the stage around because this is realism overhaul. Um, so by the time we get to our next burn, all of the fuel will have evaporated because this isn't a service module tank. Um, and it's also liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen, which tends to evaporate quite quickly in the vacuum of space. Uh, yeah, Realism Overhaul has a lot of uh, <laughs> has a lot of things like uh, a lot of things to make your life a little harder. One of which I only noticed now that I did turn off was remote tech, because I did a series in this where I went to the moon, and I usually when I use remote tech about. Two thirds of, way, of the way through a series, I get so annoyed with remote tech that I turn turn it off. And this is the same install, so apparently there was no remote tech for this whole thing, which probably made it much easier. And uh, I'm fine with because as, as as much fun as setting up uh, communications networks is, it's uh, very very time consuming and slightly annoying. Anyway, uh, we get ourselves our encounter, and then uh, can just do a quick 120 meter per second burn to uh, get ourselves into a very nice low path around Jupiter, and then we can get ourselves 
circularized, well not circularized, into orbit and then we can start meeting up with the, with Europa. Now we won't be getting into orbit of Europa and neither will the real probe and that's because it's actually going to do successive flybys. And um, This might sound weird, it's like why don't you just get into orbit because then you can stay there and look for longer. But it mean, But once you're in orbit it's very hard to change your path. So you can only really look at the equator or the wherever you land, I guess, unless you got into a polar orbit. Um, but basically, it takes less fuel, and also you can look at all of uh, Europa if you just keep flying by it at different angles. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Obviously, I don't really need to look at Europa to find a landing site, because I can look at it whenever, because it's Kerbal Space Program. But it is useful to just kind of learn how to Jupiter. Uh, anyway, so now we're doing our like, inclination change burn. You'll notice that every time I do a burn with this probe, the RCS fires up just before, and that's just to induce eulage and force all the fuel to the back of the tank where it can be forced into the engine. Um, that obviously happens on Earth due to gravity, but in space it all just starts floating around, so you need some thrusters to get it into the right place. Anyway, we got ourselves our, uh, our nice uh, path there. Uh, just needs to slightly tweak that to get it right, and then we'll figure out how to get to Europa. Do a bunch of flybys, figure out how to jewel, no, how to Jupiter, and then, um, and then we'll send our, then we'll send our lander next episode. Uh, so yeah. Anyway, so you can see I've set up a few burns, a few maneuvers there, three to be precise, and, uh, we'll get a really nice, uh, close encounter with Europa, which will also bring our orbit down a little bit, which is, well, very useful. Anyway, after a little bit more time warping, we arrive at Jupiter, um, looking rather beautiful there. Well, we can't see it right now, but hey, the map looks beautiful. Look at this map! It's a good map! It's the best map. Um, but anyway, I, I realize I should probably be actually looking at the majesty of, uh, of, of Jupiter and its moons, all just flying around it with the... I don't know, it just always looks so amazing. It looks more amazing than the jewel system. I don't know why, maybe because it's just bigger, or maybe because the colors aren't so kind of you know, jokey. <laughs> um, and actually, I, I'm kind of blown away when I get close to it. I know it's just like a game and a picture, but it's really, really beautiful. I'm not sure if the really crisp pristineness will come in, come through in uh, YouTube compression, but it looks really nice. Like, it's very black behind it, and then just very bright and light right in front of us. I don't know, it just looks fantastic. Uh, <laughs> I think it's just a good, it's a good looking planet, and I hope it does come through on the, uh, on the YouTube video, because I know YouTube compresses things a little bit, and it looks a little bit janky, um, and not quite as clean, but, uh, this is a nice looking planet, I should come back here, and I will, with a lander. Anyway though, <laughs> enough just staring at the planets, it's time to do our burn, of course, inducing eulage first, and then getting ourselves into orbit. We've got a bunch of Delta V in this, you'll notice I'm not using that tiny little thruster anymore as well, I'm using an asterisk engine, which is burning real fuel at a real ISP, at a real thrust, and, um, that sounded really fucking weird when you said that, Peter. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so, oh, compose yourself. All right, self-composed, and now we uh, get our ap apoapses down to a reasonable um, to a reasonable height where we can start. Well, just picking out uh, uh, encounters with uh, Europa. It's good to leave yourself in a very e elliptical orbit because it means you can just do small changes to make quite big differences at the other end, which means it makes it much easier to meet up with moons. Um, so that's what we're doing here. We've planned ourselves our encounter that you saw earlier, the three maneuvers, um, and this will get us pretty close, and then we're going to do a plane change to actually get us lined up with Europa, and then we'll be able to fly by it. Um, this all does take quite a long time because this orbital period is very high because I think it's about a 30 day orbit. Um, so yeah. Anyway, uh, then we do our, our plane change, just Jupiter hanging there in the background looking rather beautiful, um, if a little shaded because the sun's on the other side. And uh, yeah, then we just uh, use our RCS there to tweak our tweak our orbit. Um, this, uh, this probe you'll have also noticed has quite a lot less scientific equipment on it because makes it lighter and easier. Now, I mean, it's also powered entirely by RTGs because, yeah, well, we're very far from the sun at this point, so it just makes sense to use RTGs. Anyway, here we are just flying in past uh, Europa, getting a good look at it. Look how beautiful that is, all those scars on the surface, and it, uh, it does look quite nice. I think these textures are really... I don't think these are even the highest resolution um, real solar system textures, and I think when you do get close to planets, they do look kind of janky. But from a distance, these textures look really nice. Anyway, after looking for a while, we do some more scientific experiments. Of course, not particularly useful, because this is in career mode, but hey, it's fun to pretend. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, a seismic, apparently there's no seismic data in space, given that there's no anything in space. Um, anyway, after all of that, we uh, fly on past Europa and uh, 
head on back into orbit of Jupiter. But I want to get another encounter. Of course, NASA won't be flying past just once. And of course, they'll be flying past more than twice, actually. But I'm going to get a second encounter anyway. Try and... Um, Trying to get a look at uh, Europa from a different angle. And we are going to. Look, we're flying right over the top of it. Um, and that looks rather nice. So we uh, perform our quite a hefty burn. 400 meters per second of Delta V. But uh, we've got loads of Delta V, so it's fine. And also, I'm only doing this one more encounter. So it doesn't matter how much fuel I use. This burn at four times time acceleration, by the way. Just because they take a little while with, uh, you know, low-powered engines. But uh, we complete the burn, and uh, we'll be uh, getting on down there in no time. So, uh, yes, after a little bit of flying in, um, and a lot of warping around Jupiter, because this is actually an encounter in like three or four orbits time, um, but after all that warping, we have our encounter, and we're going to move in, move in through the moons, the Galilean moons. Of course, um, Realism Overhaul only models the Galilean moons, um, because Jupiter has like 60, and that would be just insane. Although maybe you could cluster a bunch of asteroids in there and have some fun with that. I don't know. Anyway, as we're flying into uh, towards Europa, I noticed I think um, Ganymede is coming at me, uh, looking pretty fierce, and I was worried it would, you know, it would get in my way and <laughs> take take me with it. Um, but luckily, the encounter distances are pretty low um, in 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 around Jupiter for some reason. But we do get a nice look at Ganymede flying past there. I guess I could have gone some, to some other moons today, but I thought I'd stick to the actual Europa Clipper mission because hey, I want to be realistic, and that's why I'm not using communications. <laughs> Anyway, the moon we're looking for does turn up eventually, and there it is. Europa coming in again. And we actually get a nice look at it uh, here. We get to see that there's a bunch of, like, flat patches and rough patches. So this actually does tell us a little bit about where to land. So, uh, yeah, I'd say pretty successful. Anyway, that's the end of the episode today. We now know how to Jupiter. We know how to Europa. We know how to fly around. We know how to... We know maybe where to land. This bit looks nice. That's, yeah, some good shit. <laughs> so uh, in the next episode, we will be coming in and landing on uh, on Europa, uh, which, yeah, should be pretty fun. Um, I, I thought it would be nice to play a little more Realism Overhaul after I did my Moon series. And, uh, well, someone did suggest that I should uh, go to Jupiter, so I guess I kind of took their suggestion. But I, I thought, well, it seems appropriate. The the mission to Jupiter in real life has been greenlit, so let's do it in, do it in KSP. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this, um, and uh, yeah, I hope you come back for the next episode. But this has been Caspi with Tate. I will see you next time.